Hello, uh, welcome back. Where have you been all the time? <laughs> uh, so, first I'm gonna tell you what this will be. It is a attachment for my tool and cutter grinder that allows me to grind ready. Uh, at work, we needed uh, or we will need to turn a buttress thread and it's an external thread you might say well what's the point by an insert but in this case uh, this uh, thread is uh, within a, a frontal recess so you have to go in with the tool in this uh, recess cut the thread and you can't move out that much because there is uh, the next wall so you the tool has to be axial and that's not available as far as i know and uh, i think uh, the one responsible for buying uh, the tools and uh, sorting out all the things material and whatnot uh, checked for that so he asked me whether I could uh, make that tool and I said yes after some thinking because I remembered that I bought this uh, attachment years ago but uh, never assembled it uh, and yes th there were parts missing and uh, I didn't need it so I decided to take the dive and, and finally get that thing done. So initially I thought, well, that's going to be a short, short part about uh, uh, painting and then assembly and then uh, explaining about a bit uh, how this uh, attachment works and then showing the final tool and finally the finished product and uh, thus explaining why uh, we had to make this special tool. But then I thought, well, there aren't that many videos about painting. Well, there are, I guess, a lot of videos, but uh, nothing that are related to what we do or uh, what we should do. <laughs> or do not want to do because uh, some think that's uh, uh, too complicated and the results are bad anyhow. I'm going to show you how to prepare castings or machinery so that you get decent results. Uh, with decent I mean it's not going to be as shiny as a toaster, it's not a car uh, sitting in a showroom, it still is a tool and uh, it just has to look kind of uh, good. So you will have uh, some defects here and there, but in my eyes uh, these are acceptable uh, and, and well, you often see them in, in brand new products and so this is the standard uh, I want to and this is the standard I want to achieve. So let's just look at what uh, kind of tools we need. Uh, the investments aren't that big. Uh, you need a paint gun and the paint gun I do have is uh, at least 40 years old. I got them uh, from a neighbor and well it was neglected but uh, it's still working it's uh, it's a cheap one but yeah still you get good results so you don't have to buy a SATA or something like this I do have a SATA but you don't need it uh, you don't need uh, expensive tools uh, just basic quality that's uh, good enough. Then you need uh, to, to, to prepare your workplace. Uh, yeah, that's 
not something new, but in this case you will discover if you didn't prepare and think about where to put your parts after you have painted them and before painting the next one, uh, you will discover that you are not able uh, to handle it without uh, grabbing in the wet paint. So you have to think about that before uh, you real realize that uh, it's impossible. So you maybe you uh, put it on top of a soda can or a tomato soup can or whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter, but you have to have one place where you can put your part, reach every side with the paint gun and then can put it away and do the next part. Furthermore, you need a compressor, no wonder, and uh, don't think that you can use, uh, can attach it to an oiler. You need to, uh, you need a water separator and a pressure regulator and then go into the paint gun. Something ar around one bar is enough, uh, but it depends on the paint gun and the paint you will use and uh, maybe you need two bars but not more and uh, certainly enough air so a tiny little airbrush compressor is certainly not enough. Next you will need a sanding block or, or some means to uh, for sanding so uh, a sanding block uh, made out of cork is something that is good enough. You can even use some scrap wood and uh, saw it to size. Uh, if you have bigger surfaces, uh, I advise to use an orbital sander with compressed air. Uh, they aren't expensive, something like uh, 30 euros or something or 50 euros. Uh, Chinese uh, sanders are good enough. Then uh, for the orbital sander, or you could use a circular sander with an uh, electric motor, they aren't that good, but uh, if you have one, use it. Uh, to make them work better, uh, you should use a dust extractor, so your vacuum cleaner connected to it. This prevents uh, the sanding dust uh, to clog up the sanding paper and so it will last uh, way longer and uh, speed up your work. One more thing is you need an air mask. Trust me, these fumes are really nasty. The uh, fumes from the PU are nasty and the fumes from uh, PE are really nasty. If you want to have uh, kidney pain or a headache or a bad stomach, you can neglect that point, but I strongly advise you to use a, a gas mask uh, with a cold filter and a, a fine uh, particle filter. These aren't too expensive. This is uh, more or less a one-time investment. The filter, the re replaceable filters aren't that expensive something like 10 euros and they uh, can be used several times. They are not just for uh, one spray pass. Uh, you can use it three, four, five times at least. So there's no point in uh, being cheap there. After you have used uh, your spray gun, uh, you should really you you should really uh, clean it immediately because uh, I will uh, you should use uh, 2k paint and this uh, will harden uh, the pot time is something around one hour or two hours and if you think you can leave uh, the paint in the paint gun you will discover that you will have to buy a new one or soak it uh, in acetone for a month uh, to get the crap out again. So buy some uh, 
uh, thinner. You don't need to use uh, expensive uh, thinner, just a, a simple and, and relatively cheap uh, cleaning thinner does the job and uh, yeah, that's that should do it. But don't forget that uh, sometimes you will discover during painting that uh, the paint is already starting to harden. It's and then you need to be quick and everything has to be prepared. And uh, if you start searching for the thinner, uh, it will be too late. So, uh, the first step uh, in uh, the paintwork is removing the old paint and uh, the old putty. Uh, there's a really quick way uh, and the older the paint is and the older uh, the, the putty is, uh, the fa faster it will be. It is a uh, needle, needle de-ruster uh, shown here. This one is a Chinese one. It costs something like uh, 80 euros if you buy an Atlas Copco or something like this. Uh, they will be way, way more expensive, something like uh, 300 euros or, or about that. But it showed that mine, uh, the cheap one, uh, did work uh, quite well. So you will uh, blow off uh, all the old paint. Sandblasting doesn't work uh, because uh, the, the the paint uh, is is not hard enough, uh, and it will take forever. This this isn't the right method. Uh, with uh, the needle deruster, you will see that uh, the very first uh, coating, uh, rust preventive coating, will stay in place uh, somewhere, but it doesn't matter. Uh, what remains on the casting is uh, very well adhered, so you don't have to care and uh, try to remove it uh, with some f with chemicals. It's that's uh, a solid connection, and you don't have to care for that. Now, before uh, we use uh, our paint, uh, let's talk about the paint uh, in more detail. I strongly suggest uh, only to use 2K paints uh, and nothing else. Uh, they are resistant to oil and, and uh, to solvents, uh, not completely, but uh, mostly they are resistant to more resistant to heat and wear, so stay with these. For the first coat, I'm uh, using uh, filler primer. Uh, so a filler, you can have thicker layers and you can use these uh, for smoothing the surface. It's, uh, it speeds up work uh, doing it that way. Uh, this is not an advertisement uh, for a brand. I just uh, say that I have uh, very good experiences with them. I have used them. Uh, for you know, decades and I had too many disappointments uh, with other brands so I stay away from others maybe there are uh, or certainly there are some brands that are good and reliable but uh, I'm, I don't want to, uh, to uh, change a running system so what I'm using is uh, the, the Mipa brand and uh, for the uh, filler coating I'm using a PE coat uh, shown here polyethylene 2K uh, as always uh, for the uh, top coat I'm using a PU polyurethane uh, 2K paint uh, on the uh, cans, you, there are instructions uh, how to mix them, so uh, paint and hardener, you should follow this rule. 
and they all also give advice on how much uh, thinner you should use. Uh, I prefer to uh, go down with the filler, uh, with the thinner. So for the uh, filler coating, uh, for the first pass, I didn't add any thinner. Uh, because this allows you to make uh, thicker coatings uh, so it works kind of uh, like a putty. Uh, it's almost like sputtering the paint uh, on the part, but uh, it will level out uh, mostly, not completely. So uh, you might try this or at uh, 5 or 10 percent uh, thinner. Uh, to get a, a good result, but it's not that tragic if you see uh, on the first try that uh, it's just sputtering, uh, just add um, some thinner, it's uh, quick and, and, and nothing will happen. This will take you uh, just a minute or two, so uh, nothing is ruined. For the uh, final coating, I used something like 10% uh, uh, thinner. Again, I didn't uh, want to have a, a super shiny surface. It's not a car, it's not a toaster. I want to have a solid uh, layer of paint and uh, that's my aim. You will get uh, uh, orange peel-like uh, surface slightly, but uh, it doesn't matter. Dirt and scratches and dents don't show up that easily and uh, it's uh, in, in this case this is something preferable. Then uh, one last word about the, the top coat is uh, there are different classes of reflectivity. You have a reflectivity of 90, this is a high gloss. Then you have uh, 50, this is semi-gloss, and uh, then you have uh, 30, this, I don't know how you call it, uh, this is dull, uh, and I advise to use uh, 50 or 30, because uh, with the high-gloss paint you will see uh, every fingerprint and every little speck and uh, it's a machine tool, you are using it, you are touching it, it will get dirty and uh, okay so you might say well but uh, it's the, the, the paint uh, all the, the wear resistance and what not and you need to do super duper preparations and sandblast and uh, micro finish and what not uh, I can tell you here I have an example of a parts catcher at work I made this uh, catcher I think two years ago and uh, attached it to the lathe and uh, since then I, I looked at the parts counter about 150 to 200,000 parts dropped into it yes sure uh, the paint is gone partially but uh, it's no wonder when the parts are rubbing against it uh, over and over again. But the, the, the parts catcher was made of some sheet metal with rusty spots. I just uh, went over it with uh, some scotch bright uh, type uh, with the, the black one. This is the roughest, roughest one. Grid 60 or, or, or even 40, just went over it, didn't care about rust spots, uh, there still was some rust on it, then uh, cleaned it with acetone and uh, spray painted it, that's it, just one coat, not two coats, that's all, and after two years uh, the paint doesn't chip, rust does not come through, and uh, the parts catcher is always oily and uh, it doesn't matter to the paint, it, uh, other paints just will crumble or, or, or 
start to wrinkle this one was completely influenced uh, was completely not influenced so that's why I'm, I'm using this paint because I know it just works for the kind of environment uh, on machineries so so we have the first part uh, first uh, coating with uh, the primer and filler combined primer and filler as I said uh, re quite thick uh, almost buttering after hardening uh, I sanded it down with uh, grit 80 uh, here I show that uh, with all those uh, acute corners and then the, the, the cluttered surface it's uh, quite uh, hard to, to sand there so I just used uh, some uh, sticks and uh, double-sided sticky tape and sanding paper glued it on uh, cut it to shape and then you can get in into every corner you want to go in and if you try to do this just with your finger uh, you won't get an even surface because uh, you tend to go into the valleys with the with your finger and uh, it doesn't smooth out uh, the rough parts or just the rough parts so after this has been done blast it off uh, quick clean so uh, your greasy fingers uh, don't uh, prevent uh, the next uh, coat to uh, clinch to the uh, primer the second pass was uh, the same uh, primer filler, uh, just uh, with with some thinner, so I, I get a smooth smoother surface, and uh, just a, a thin coating that covers up all the scratches uh, scratches from the uh, grid eighty paper. So the second coating. Uh, I sand it down with uh, grit uh, 280 I think it was or 320 I don't remember uh, you could do that better than I did here uh, on top of the second coating you could make a, a very thin almost like dusting layer of uh, black paint uh, from the rattle can and thus you will see where you have been sending you have to uh, continue sending as long as you see uh, black uh, spots uh, because that means uh, you didn't reach there with your sanding progress after using that sanding paper i went over it quick with one quick pass uh, with this uh, foam backed uh, sanding uh, how <laughs> do you call that from 3M uh, with this one you can reach in every corner where you maybe didn't reach in uh, with those uh, uh, with those uh, wooden strips and uh, you can make uh, round corners uh, a bit smoother and uh, that's it doesn't take that long you don't need uh, like uh, a lot of people or many people will tell you yes and then i used uh, grit 400 wet and dry and sanded it down and after that grit 800 and uh, 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 no that's just a waste of time again it's not a car uh, the paint will cover all those scratches this grid 280 really is enough you don't need that fine minute work and now to the final pass after uh, or before applying the uh, next layer you should uh, go over it uh, blow off the dust uh, you can do that with the spray gun and just by not pulling the trigger completely just half the way and then you have compressed air going out and this will play, blow up off the dust uh, 
After that, you should uh, wipe over all the surface uh, with some silicone remover, or you also could use uh, thinner just to remove uh, the finger grease. Again, as I said, I didn't use uh, that much thinner than advised. Uh, I went with uh, something like 10%, maybe 15%. Uh, this uh, will result in a thicker coating and uh, less tendency of the paint uh, dripping, uh, running all over your surface and uh, yeah, showing tears and this will make you cry too. Uh, so how I do this is I make, uh, if I have several parts, I go over each part with just a, a very thin pass. Uh, this doesn't cover uh, the part completely. It's just uh, more like, like dusting it and uh, I let it vent off. So maybe, yeah, for a few minutes. So uh, the, the final or the real uh, layer will uh, clinch better to your part. So this also prevents uh, the paint from dripping down. But you will discover you can try that on some piece of paper or cardboard, uh, how much uh, paint you can uh, shoot at your part uh, until it starts to run down and you will uh, be astonished how long this takes. Uh, there is uh, extra chemistry in the, the paint that prevents that from happening, but uh, this also uh, prevents from getting a super smooth surface. So these paints uh, I, I'm using are for industrial use, for machinery, uh, agricultural or mining work, or for trucks and uh, yes, for tool machinery too. So they don't uh, put their focus on uh, on super smooth surface. Their focus is V resistance and durability. So. That's about it. Uh, in the next part, uh, I will show, uh, I think I will uh, show uh, assembly and uh, making missing parts because uh, what I got is not complete and talk about uh, geometry. And uh, I guess there will be a part three where I actually do grind the tool and uh, we'll show the finished product uh, with that buttress thread. I hope this part is not too secret but uh, to be shown here, but I won't show a, a, a drawing so you don't know who needs something like this. Well, that's it for now and goodbye to all those suck. Puppets, puppets, and and goodbye from. This looks like uh, you can call me Kermit now. Ooh.